Welcome to another episode of the Planetary Persuader. This one is for November 27th, 2020. And it's all within the constellation of Taurus, okay? Um, so that's ruled by Venus. So Moon and Venus are the feminine planets. Even though we, in Vedic astrology, the sidereal astrology, we call both the Moon and Venus, they're all males, the planets. But all the nakshatras are females, um, all the lunar mansions. Um, so... But this is the one of his favorites. So God was like, well, I can't really get rid of Rohini. And I can't really get rid of the moon. You want to get rid of the moon? So what I'll do is this. I'll make the moon shrink to nothing. And then it can come and be born again. Because we need the moon. You know, so we have the new moon. Then we have a full moon. We're in full moon. It's a lunar eclipse. Um, and so there's a power here, folks. You know, um, things are about to shift. And um, the North Node likes Taurus as a sign in general, and the South Node loves Scorpio. It is empowered completely by Scorpio. So um, this is going to be a really interesting eclipse, and hopefully it's going to bring peaceful results. Now, I imagine the other side where K2's at is probably like in... Imagine it's in like Jaishta still. I don't think it's moved over into Anurata yet. So um, there's some deep stuff coming. That's all I can say. So it's really important that we pay attention to this eclipse. Okay. So without that, with that said, um, there's really not too many things that have shifted radically that I can see, um, you know, in the Western Zodiac, we still got Venus and Scorpio, still Jupiter and Capricorn, Mars and Aries, um, Mercury is in Scorpio, Mercury is going to go move into Sagittarius on um, Tuesday or Wednesday, I guess on Tuesday at 11.51 a.m., so that should make communication maybe just a little bit easier. Just a little bit, you know. Everybody will be talking about what happened after the full moon Monday. Oh boy. And, um, and I would think, you know, in places like Europe, where people are awake during that eclipse, uh, or in Asia, that, that's where things will be really wild. <laughs> so here in the United States, most of us are going to be asleep. We're going to be in bed on the couch or something when this happens, so, uh, outside of that, there's really no, um, no, no real big news today, folks, so, that's good, you know, they, sometimes they say no news is good news, and I'm down with that, um, all right, so, greetings Aries, welcome to your horoscope, I mean, we're looking at a weekend that's all about securing ourselves, securing our resources, um, Making investments, you know, you don't want to spend too much on the holidays. It just doesn't make sense. Um, since this eclipse, Moon is close to Uranus, and Uranus is a trickster planet, and it's full of surprises. We're probably going to be surprised. Um, and, I mean, I think the best thing to do during this is to say mantras, you know, and if you want to 
work on your loveliness because Rohini is lovely or if you want to buy a new car because she always has nice cars you know um, this is probably a good a good moon for that um, I think really it's all about seeking the higher road Aries you know um, if you have grandkids if you're older you know that's that's going to be big for you. Your relationship with your father is super important. Your relationship with your teachers is super important. And um, deeper love, you know. Let other people make their moves, do their thing. <clears throat> well, greetings, Taurus, and welcome to your horoscope. <clears throat> so the full moon in the Western Zodiac is actually in Gemini. Um, so, you know, I guess I should have said that. Well, well. And it, but it's the same deal. You know, it's with the North Node. Okay. And so, which is Rahu. And this will probably affect your pocketbook. You know, boom. Yeah. And you might have an unusual idea of how to make money, and it might work out for you. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, Venus in your seventh house. It's lovely. You're a good negotiator right now. People love you. They want you. They want you to do good. Um, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto are in your lucky house, the ninth house. Um, the sun for Taurus <clears throat> in the eighth house, it's other people's money. It's other people's trip. And you, sometimes you just have to let other people do their trip. But I think, you know, like you might benefit from your spouse's money this week. Honey, can you lend me 20 bucks so I can, you know, get myself a bag of weed? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. <laughs> Something will happen. And, um, you know, since Mars is in your 12th house of secret enemies and stuff, you kind of have to, you know, you got to keep like that thing that bicycle, pro bicycle riders have, that little... Um, mirror to look behind them, you know, things like that actually are going to be helpful. Uh, so you stay, you stay safe. That's all. That's all. I just want you to stay safe. Well, greetings, Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope. So this, you know, for Gemini's, this full moon is all about you, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> and it's an eclipse, and it's a full moon, and it's um. It's the sun's in your partnership sign, which is Sagittarius. And Mercury's moving there, too. So it's like romance, good partnerships, good agreements, good negotiations. That's what you want right now. It's, um, you don't want the sun going down on you. You know, it's like that Elton John song. Don't let the sun go down on me. You know, so, yeah. Um, that moon's going to be beautiful. And, um, Gemini, you, you know, you might be in a place where you're working to get out of debt or you've been crippled by it. Um, you know, since quarantine, it may have affected you worse than a lot of people. And think about it, Gemini rules the lungs. <clears throat> I mean, this is, this is a place where people can be vulnerable. Um... We've got Neptune in the midheaven. So, working with the principle of agape love, honoring all religions, and being delighted by them rather than having an ego like, I'm the right way, because, you know, it's like, <clears throat> enough of that noise, you know? Um, you can't allow your faith to affect social decency. You know, there's commonalities of truth that we all know. And we don't want to violate those just because we've got some kind of superstition that we're going to do good because of that. That's not a good idea. And I don't think you're going to do that, Gemini, but just in case you were. I do have one Gemini friend. I love her. Um, but she, um, no, I have more than one. But anyhow, <clears throat> I think she liked the orange man, okay? I know. I won't 
calling out her gender is enough. If I went into her ethnicity, you'd be like, oh my God, are you kidding me? She actually, dude, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> um, what I heard was 57% of the white males and 56% of the white females in this country voted for Trump. So people who've got, like, things to say about white Americans, yeah. I'm sorry. Can't help it. They bleached me. <laughs> oh, God. No, I did not vote for Trump. Sorry. I, I couldn't. I could not. I, yeah. You know, I've got a daughter. I don't need that kind of aggravation. Um, <clears throat> greetings, Cancer. Welcome to your horoscope. Okay. Now, you love full moons and you love eclipses. Full moon's in the 12th house, house of karma. The sun right now is in the 6th house, which is a house of challenges and obstacles and health issues. So, um... I would say cancer take care of yourself right now that is number one then you've got this relationship going on with Capricorn and there's a little bit of pleasure Jupiter there's a little bit of pain and and discipline a little bit of suffering with Saturn and then there's a little bit of what the heck are you doing with Pluto <laughs> and um, and so deeper insights you know I would say discipline yourself what makes a good relationship find out that. Um, you're very motivated right now as far as business and career, to get things going, to do the right thing. You've got good friends, and I mean, the moon is going to be in Cancer eventually this week, um, at least Wednesday night, and I mean, Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday. That's Cancer moon, so that'll be your happy place, Cancer. Once you be in your happy place, um, greetings, Leo. Uh, sure. I'd like you to be in your happy place, too. I mean, most of the time you're happy. I mean, most of the time you're really in your heart. And I mean, and that is the key to happiness. And so that's where people can learn about Leo. <clears throat> okay, so Mercury um, is moving over into your fifth house with the sun this week. So it's like you're lightening up a little bit. You're finding ways to engage with your children, engage with creative projects. I mean, the holidays are here. You know, a lot of you avoided the Thanksgiving fiasco because of COVID. It was an excuse. I didn't want to talk to him. I didn't want to talk football or politics. It's great. It's over. <clears throat> but Leo, I mean, I would say you've got a lot of health issues. To still consider that you're, you've been mulling over, you've been working with, and you want to get healthier. And um, this weekend's like making public appearances, any kind of volunteer work, any way that you help other people, that's going to be the payback. And I know this is like Black Friday. I don't, why did I even say that? Black Friday, Black Lives Matter, right? Isn't that what Black Friday is all about? No, it's about, supposedly it's about getting... The book's in the black through massive consumption. I think that's really hard on the planet, folks. we got to learn another way of um, working with our resources. That's, that's the truth. And I think Leo, you know, with Mars now in your ninth house, you're like, yeah, I want to just give and do and make there be more love and less emphasis on things. And that's, that's a great way to start. I'm all for that. I will join you with that. Um, and by next, by Friday next week, you'll have moon in your sign, and you'll be loving life again, so don't, no worries, you know. Okay, greetings, Virgo, and welcome to your horoscope. Okay, well, I mean, Sagittarius time is about getting down to what makes you happy inside, you know. And, um... Mercury is moving into your fourth house. It's good for research. It's really good for history when Mercury is going through your fourth house. And Venus is still in the third. And so, um, love where you live, live where you love. <laughs> it's really important to do that. You know, one of the worst things I would say about Western settlers is they would 
go to a place, destroy it, and then move on to the next place. And, oh, I don't like it here anymore. I'm moving. You know, this is a common thing I hear from people. And I, and I think, well, what have you done to improve where you live? Are you going to come back, come to a new place and just bring your garbage there? No, you're not going to do that, are you, Virgo? No, you're going to improve it right where you live because that makes things happier. And we want to be in a happy place, a loving space. You want a spiritual relationship. Foundation of a spiritual relationship is giving without expecting return. It's the agape love thing. I'm not saying be a doormat, you know. I'm not saying be dumb. Um, you know, Venus and, and Neptune are trining each other right now, and so there's sort of this, that you're going to, you know, the way out is in, you know. Do the meditation, do the prayers, do make donations to poor people, you know. Um, do karma yoga, volunteer to help somebody, um, all of these things are going to bring you forward. And sure, there's things out of your control, and some people are aggressive, and they're having problems, and it's okay. In the words of um, our friend who wrote, wrote the Four Agreements, you know, don't take it personally. It's not about you. <clears throat> well, greetings, Libra, and welcome to your horoscope. But it's all about you. <laughs> Just for this moment, right? Okay, so, you know, we've got Venus in Scorpio. And um, so that's your second house. That's a, that's, a Venus, that's a Venus house. So love is good. You know, love is, is moving forward. And using your voice is a good thing. And, and Mercury is now in the third house. So, <clears throat> or will be there, you know, by Tuesday. So your ideas are important right now. They're being listened to. You're thinking really well and you've got good things. Now, in your inner life, you're feeling a little bit of like there's some emotional blocks. I'd like to be happier. Um, but I've got to work with it. I've got to discipline myself. And like one of the disciplines is like write down before you go to bed five things you're grateful about today. And I, I've heard that if you did this for like 40 days, it like radically changes your life. So... And get a little journal and write it down right before you go to bed. Hey, I'm happy about this, you know. I made it to work. I wasn't too late. Everything, you know, people were good to me. Um, <clears throat> eighth house. Eighth house is about transformation. Uranus is there. So there's just unusual ideas floating around. Um, this full moon. It's in your ninth house. So it's like you're going to get something out of it. You're going to learn something. And you might be blessed beyond... Belief. I mean, Rohini is about luxury, people. <laughs> you know, and I mean, that's where the part of the sky that moon is in. And, and so I, I could see Libras getting a little extra luxury with all of this. Hmm. Who wouldn't, you know, luxury feels so good, you know. It's, ooh, it's just, I like it. And Rohini. Have you ever known Rohini? I actually know a Rohini. But, um, unfortunately, oh, uh, well, yeah. You know, she has her issues. Okay, well, greeting Scorpio. Welcome to your horoscope. Scorpio never has issues. <laughs> okay, well, um, you've got some good ideas. I mean, relationship-wise for Scorpio, it's been a little bit wacky. But since Venus is in your first house, you're looking good. I mean, you're looking really attractive. And... This attraction is going to work in your favor this week. It's going to help you. This full moon could bring a little extra money in your life, or it could put you in debt. We don't know. It could go either way, because it's the eighth house. But it's, it's a house of unjust rewards. And it's there with a desire that has no bottom. And, um, I mean, the full moon is not with Uranus. I, I, I have to, you know... I mean, it's near it, but it's not, you know, it's not in a conjunction, so we don't have to worry about that. The weekend, sure, this weekend, the moon and Uranus, so there could be some interesting relationship drama this weekend, that's okay. I like Mars in the sixth house. I mean, Mars in the sixth house, you know, Tomasic planets do good in the Dostana houses, they say. It's like, what is he talking about? Mm -hmm. Tomasic planets, Saturn, Mars, north and south node, um... For some reason, they're, they're rougher houses, the 6th, the 8th, and the 12th. Those are the Distana houses. Um, 
and Western astrologies pretty much agree with that. But when Mars is there, it teaches you discipline like, okay, we're going to go through this obstacle course and we're going to kick some butt. We're going to really move forward. And so that's what I'm expecting my Scorpio friends to do with that. Right now, that's all you need to know. And you, yeah, the money's coming, sure. Greetings, Sagittarius. And yes, indeed, Sagittarius, you look like money. Hey. Um, you know, there's this mission that Sagittarius is on, you know, achieving the goal. What can we do before the lights go out completely? You know, it's like winter solstice is like the end of Sagittarius. When the lights go out completely and we're in that black hole of the, of the center of the Milky Way galaxy, you know, where all the secrets are kept. So if you're born after the 16th of December, you might get more off a Capricorn horoscope. Um, but what I'm saying to you is the money's coming. And that in a lot of ways, even though there's been some difficulties, there's a lot more good heading your way. This full moon could be romantic. It's in your partnership sign. Uh, you got really good mojo and energy from Mars being in your fifth house. Um, you're really wanting peace. You're a little more introspect. And I think this is really true of all the fall signs, you know, Libra, Scorpio. Sagittarius is like there's kind of even though this has been our time of year it's like it's been like whoa it's been a little heavier you know We're, we've been really a little more into that inner life and how are we going to deal with this but um, the moon is helping take us out of that and uh, you know we're, we're going to do the best we can until the next new moon that's really what it comes down to and then we say greetings Capricorn and welcome to your horoscope. Hmm. Okay. I mean, you know, Saturn's in the first house. There's no getting around it. Um, even if you have a really good relationship with Saturn, like people who do have Saturn in Capricorn or Saturn in Aquarius tend to. Um, people with Saturn in Libra tend to have a really good relationship with Saturn as well. Okay. I'd say that's probably more so true in the sidereal zodiac, but we're doing the western tropical thing right here. Um, hmm. What can I say about this? Well, it's like always when the sun's transiting your 12th house, it's best to either lay low, get out in, a, in the wilderness, um, you know, hang out in libraries, ashrams, universities. I mean, this is a house of loss, okay? And it's also a place where we pay back some of our negative karma. So, I mean, if anything bad happens, it's actually really good. You're getting over some negative karma here. I mean, I know that's... It's like going to the dentist, you know. It's like, ah, the negative karma of eating sugar. Ah, you know. And then there's people who eat lots of sugar and never have a cavity. I, you know, my brother's one of those people. Um, but, you know, it's... Everyone's got different gifts and different... Um, things that are hurting them. That's, that's something. Um, if you have any fixed assets you need to sell, now's probably a good time to take action on them. Um, you're actually enjoying life. You're enjoying surprises. Surprises make everyone's life a little better. I love doing things nice for people, especially on their birthdays, like just little surprises. It makes, you know, we're here to lift up each other's vibe, you know, that's ultimately what we're here for, and um, that's how we make good relationships, and, and like your social life's good, Capricorn, I think you're going to do okay this week, a full moon, yeah, don't eat too much candy, that's going to hurt, <laughs> don't drink too much, that's going to hurt too, all right, greetings, um, Aquarius, and welcome to your horoscope, yeah, gotcha, 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 what do we got going on here, well, the Gemini moon's nice. I mean, that full moon coming on um, Sunday night, Monday morning, even though it's an eclipse. I mean, if you have children, I'd watch out for them, you know, be really careful and cautious with them. And um, 
What do you desire in your life right now? Because in some ways, this moon coming up could help you manifest a desire. Yeah, I'm seeing that. Sagittarius time for Aquarius. It's fun. It's social. Although you may have to Zoom social. Or, you know, and then you could be one of the people that thinks it's all 5G and, you know. And I don't know if it is or isn't, you know, for sure. Um, you know, I'm not... I'm not the expert, okay? And um, I know that we're in a period in history where there's so much more mass media and so many more ways of communication. It seems like communication and manipulation have gotten worse than they've ever been at any time known to man. And I think a lot of you Aquarians would agree that to in some extent artificial intelligence is after the souls of our children. And we need to do something about that if we don't want them to take it. And, you know, and, and some of us are looking forward to President Alexis. President Alexis, will you fix the economy? I can't. No. <laughs> you know, President Alexis, will you stop all wars? I'm working on it. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I think for you, it's really just keep spreading the love. Do your best. You're making life beautiful. All right. We're going to Pisces now. So Pisces, you know, there's this nice relationship with Neptune in your first house and Venus and Scorpio in the ninth house. So that's both working for you. You know, it's working for you in a way that good fortune is coming. And um, your social life is still a focus, even though... You've had to socialize from a distance with masks. I mean, the people with masks 100 feet away from each other, I don't quite get that, you know. It's floating around in the air here somewhere, I know. I'm, you know, you're feeling secure that way, I get it. Um, or alone in your car, I get it. Well, I don't want to touch my face, that's why I don't take it off. I get that, okay. Um, you know, you've got um, Sun and Mercury... In the 10th house, so this is about career, this is about manifesting, this is about doing positive karma with the public and the world, world. and there's some reward in this. Um, and um, I'd say if you got weapons or things you're not using, it's a good idea to sell them, get rid of them. Uh, communication is a little bit erratic and different, and this full moon's about your feelings, you know. In a lot of ways, this is really going to take you, what's your relationship like with your mother? I would call her before the full moon and elevate your mother, even if she's not the greatest person. Um, whatever we do to elevate our parents, we really help our own karma. Even if theirs was bad, find something good about the people you don't like this week and try and do something, especially people you don't like, if there's a chance you can elevate their mood and do a good way. It doesn't take any th any th ability to do that to someone we do like, is in our own trends. But let's get get to the place where we're making bridges and uh, reaching out and just creating more peace. It's cosmic Kev, cosmic forecast, uh, the planetary persuader. I'd like you to like. I'd like you to subscribe. Um, tell a friend. Be with you next week.